Good morning, everybody. I'm Mr. Saloff. I teach in the Social Studies Department and eagerly looking forward to next Monday when the track season begins. We begin then. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. That's Philippians 4, verse 1. We begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The opening statement, Philippians 4, comes from Paul's really greeting to the Philippian congregation. This was a small group of believers Paul ministered to in his second missionary journey after he and his traveling companions had received what's now called the Macedonian call. One visit led to another and then to a third, and the Philippian uh, family of believers continued to grow both um, daily in number and in spirit. It was a congregation that held a special place in the apostles' heart. The letter to the Philippians, as also a letter to us, is really a letter of love, touching on a little of this and a little of that, not the least of which was concerned that they, having been called to the saving faith in Jesus, would stand firm in the Lord in the face of any deceptive and outside influences. This is the text. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, just as you have, uh, ha just as you have us as a model. Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before and now, and I tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is their destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. We wait eagerly as a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord. And, um, yeah, there we go. I got to finish that. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way. Dear friends, the Apostle Paul is calling his Philippian friends to follow his example. Paul could make this statement not because he was such a bright, shining light of righteous living. Paul's example was only good because of his relationship with Jesus Christ his Lord. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Paul didn't want the people to think how great he was, but to know how great Jesus was in his life. It was the Lord who had so dramatically turned him around, just as it was God himself who now kept him standing in the faith. One misconception of society is the concept of rugged individualism. We like to believe that we are in control of our destiny and our friends, the world, and other influences that have no, no influence on our way of thinking at all. Well, in preparing for this chapel, I talked to Mr. Zunker and Pastor Wenzel if they ever owned the iconic 1970s leisure suit. And with pride and laughter and maybe some shame, they both admitted to wearing and owning this. Oops, we gotta go this way. There we go. <laughs> I, too, had a green leisure suit, which is interesting because I was in Fond du Lac, Pastor Wenzel was in Appleton, Mr. Zunker was in Two Rivers, all about the same time, and we all had and wore that with pride, the big collar, polyester shirt. Mr. Zunker went on to talk about his powder blue one, but not, not, not only the powder blue one, he had this accessory, the platform shoes. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? The 80s also had his trend, the big hair. And now about, what about you? You guys were born around 2006. What about your parents? Why did your parents name you the names that they named you? If you see your name up on the screen, Emma, Madison, Eva, you got the name? Just stand up once. Guys, Aiden, Jacobs, Ethan, stand up if, if your name is up on the screen. Come on.
All right, quite a few of you were born, born and your parents named you what they named you. Why? Because society was naming people Emma and Madison and Logan and Nicholas and the like. You can sit down. You can sit down. Thank you for, for doing that. And what about you guys? There we go, the, the old hydro, hydroflax. A few years ago, a cross-country runner kind of had a, a, a minor meltdown because she lost her hydroflask. A happy ending, she found it, it was, it was returned to her, uh, no big deal. Uh, I think today, if you go up in the lost and found, you could probably find some hydroflax and they're, they're not a big deal. You guys have Stanley. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how society um, has, has influenced what we do in, in a very, perhaps, subtle, subtle way. One of our lesser-known presidents, Warren Harding, had this to say, uh, I have no trouble with my enemies, I can take care of my enemies, but my friends, my friends, they're the ones who keep me walking the floors at night. And a much better-known president, Abraham Lincoln, said, the destruction, if destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. So, the question I have for you is, who are you listening to? What subtle influences are affecting your lives and your views? The Apostle Paul asked the Philippians to follow his example in Christ. Later in the book, he builds on this theme, a verse that may be familiar to you. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. So what conversations are you having with your friends? Paul warns us that in our text that many live as enemies of the cross. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. Are we listening to the enemies of the cross of Christ? There can be no compromise with sin. The cross makes that impossible. Yet, as I hope I made clear in the introduction, the way we think is e easily influenced by those around us. Are we allowing the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh to lead us away from Christ? Enemies of the cross, they not only defend, but openly and, advo openly and boastfully advocate sins. Are your friends suggesting it's okay to cheat on a test or copy assignments or lie to others? Is sexual purity something to be joked about and sexual sins encouraged? The Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 5.3, but among you there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Are voices proclaiming biblical morality as irrelevant and out of date? When Satan tempted Adam and Eve, he came to them with a question, a simple question. Did God really say? Nothing has changed. Satan wants us to question and doubt the love of God, the love of God that he has for each and every one of us. He does this through society, our friends, and certainly our own sinful nature. It's little wonder that the Apostle Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5, verse 1, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring, roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Paul writes in the Philippians that the enemies of the gospel have the wrong focus. He writes, their God is their stomach, and their glory is their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. What a sweet contrast we see in the believer. Our citizenship is in heaven. We eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. So our eyes look heavenward, expectantly, excitedly, eagerly, continually watching for the Lord to return so he can take us to our place right beside him. We need to keep the faith with Jesus. Everything that counts, everything that matters, everything that is going to last is in heaven. Jesus promised to be with us on our journey. In Hebrews, the Lord states, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. In John 10, 27 and 28, Jesus tells us, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. 
Last week, I heard of a group of recent FVL graduates who are listening to Jesus' voice. This is a group of about 10 guys who meet weekly for mutual encouragement and Bible study. How cool is that? There are so many voices vying for your attention, it's encouraging to hear of young people gathering around the Word of God. Many of our churches offer small group Bible studies. Perhaps we should re-examine our much too busy schedules and make some time for, as Mary said, the one thing needful. We could be with a group, it could be with a group, with our families, or maybe in your own personal devotional life. Jesus encourages us to live our faith and encourage others as well. In his Sermon on the Mount, he tells us, in the same way, let your light shine before others, that they too may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. As Paul was a Christ-like example for the Philippians, we can be that Christ-like example for our friends and family. Who knows how the Lord will use your words and actions to have a positive influence on an individual or a small group or perhaps your whole community. Focus on what Jesus has done by his sinless life and death and resurrection. His love for sinners is the motivation for us to live for Jesus and not for the often deceptive desires of our heart. May we be encouraged by the truth and speak his truth and love to all who are blessed to encounter in our day-to-day -day, day -day walk on this side of heaven. We conclude with the verse we began with, Philippians 4, verse 1. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. Amen. Our hymn this morning will be led by a small group. They will sing verse 1, and you are then asked to join in verses 2, 3, and 4.
We pray. Christ, be my leader by night as by day. Save through the darkness, for he is the way. Gladly I follow my future his care. Darkness is daylight when Jesus is there. Now by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And we thank our leaders. Mr. Nolte? six essays out of the five schools, or out of three out of the five schools, and um, four were actually from Fox Valley Lutheran High School. The theme this year for the um, essay is, what are the greatest attributes of our democracy? And um, there's prize levels at each level, at the post level, the district level, state level, and then on to national. Um, unfortunately, we can only send, for every uh, 15, we can send one out to the district. And unfortunately, uh, this year, um, the, uh, well, Brooklyn Poe um, went on to the district, but she didn't place in the top three. But, um, so with that, um, I'll start. Uh, um, Julie Eward took third place, and we have a certificate and a check uh, for Julie. Second place was Grace Dobson, Grace Dobson, and she took second place, and she receives a check for three hundred dollars. <laughs> and then uh, first place, which is the only one that Sandy left, is Brooklyn Bold, and she took uh, first at ours, and she gets a, a certificate and a check for uh, four hundred dollars. <laughs> Been in it. Uh, we have a, a program at the uh, uh, middle school level uh, called the uh, Patriots Pen, and Brooklyn's been in that uh, through the years, plus at the high school level too, of course, in democracy. Wait, would you like to say something? Yes. Good morning, students. It's a pleasure for our BFW post to be here this morning to present these awards. And as I look around here at the student body, I know I've probably seen some of you students at one of the middle schools for this entire program. So it's an honor, honor to be here this morning. And you know, I drive by this road at least once a week on my way up north. And this school, when you look from the outside, is just absolutely beautiful. And when you come inside, it's more beautiful yet. So you can be very proud of this, of this high school. I commend you for participating in all these programs that you're able to. The next thing, I'm, I have a sports fan, starting from way down low, right up to the big boys and the pros. So I wanna, at this time, I wanna wish all the, all the basketball teams and the upcoming events in the spring 
Best of luck from our VFW post. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much for the announcement.